Hello indie comic fans, my name is Michael Bancroft and today I'd like to talk to you about two books I just put down, Jack Irons' The Steel Cowboy, issue 1 and 2. And while I do that I thought I might draw a little Jack Irons myself, so let's get started. Jack Irons is a creation of Cody Fernandez along with Max Dallow on line art, Matthias Laborde on colours and letters by Vincent Rush. Issue 2 we see the introduction of Steve Cannon to the colours, but we can talk about that later. Jack Irons is a kind of sci-fi western set in a time and place I can't quite put my finger on. I think in issue 2 it says it's 2076. Anyway, as the story begins we find Jack in some kind of futuristic dive bar, full of weird aliens and brightly coloured libations, regaling his life story to a suspiciously present-day looking fellow over a pint of frothy green beer. We learn quickly that Jack has actually lived multiple lives, stretching as far back as ancient Greece. In one life, he's a young Native American boy hunting with his father. We learn that Jack is a man of honour and wisdom, with a strong survival instinct. All things he's going to need in the world we find him in now. Issue 1 culminates with a scene that's mandatory for any self-respecting Western. A shootout in a bar with an 8 foot tall robot bounty hunter. In Issue 2 we're right back in the bar and Jack's drinking buddy looks decidedly more soused. Jack's upgraded to a purplish blue gloop and his story continues. This time we learn about what appears to be the main antagonist of the Steel Cowboy universe. A war hungry savage king a toxic smoke-breathing scientist in a hazmat suit, a slimy corporatist, and the most heavy metal incarnation of death I've ever seen. Bit by bit, we get to see how these four incarnations of evil turn the world into the dystopian hellscape we've been dropped into, and along the way, Jack gets a chance to show us his more fatherly side, and we see a bit more about the mysterious and brutal world he inhabits. So what's it like to read? The writing is tight and lean, and each character's voice are unique, and really work to flesh out their personality. With just two issues to go off, it's difficult to remark on the overall direction of the story, and by the end of the second issue we're still being introduced to Jack's world, but Cody Fernandez has definitely laid out a lot of ground to jump off from in future issues. Maxi Dallow's art, which is good in the first issue, really takes off in issue two. Composition, gravitas, especially character design. They've all given a real shot in the arm in the second instalment, making me very interested to see how much more Maxi can improve if he stays on for future issues. It was Matthias Laborde's colours in issue 1 that really first caught my eye with Jack Irons. The otherworldly multicoloured palette and lights mixed with a kind of dusty grit, in my opinion, helped to sell the tone and atmosphere of this story as much as the writing. And in issue 2, Steve Cannon takes that colour palette and injects it with some kind of sci-fi super drug. I don't know what Cody paid him for this issue, but if he's coming back for issue 3, he needs a raise. Not only do Steve's colours jump off the page and put you in a headlock, they do so much to tell the story and make busy compositions easy to follow and a joy to read. One thing I might have done differently is whereas in issue 1 the flashback scenes weren't too different than the present day scenes, in issue 2 they were handled more like exposition, which always runs the risk of slowing a story down. Fernandez does intersplice these with panels of Jack in the present day, but I can't lie I had more fun reading about what Jack was up to than the historic world building. Overall though, I thoroughly enjoyed reading Jack Irons and I'm looking forward to more. Cody and the crew really have created something special with this character, which is evidenced by the amount of fan art that he's so generously put into each book. If you want to read it for yourself, I do believe issue 1 is available on Comixology, and I'll leave a link in the description to the Twitter handles of everyone involved in the making of Jack Irons. As for me, I hope you like my interpretation of the man himself, and my review. If you'd like to see more of this, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button. So until next time, I'm Michael Bancroft, and this has been Jack Irons, the Steel Cowboy.